of course, Outlaws of Thunder Junction is releasing this weekend in pre-release, so we pretty much know all of the cards in the set, we know all the set mechanics, we know what the vibe is for Outlaws of Thunder Junction, and so we're going to just give you the whole set preview. We've talked about random things that have popped up as mm -hmm. uh, the weeks have gone on, uh, but now we got our full overview of the entire set. Let's go over first the set-specific mechanics. There are five main mechanics. Uh, some of them are basically just other mechanics with extra steps, much like how Disguise was morph with an extra step. Everything is kicker. Everything is kicker. For example, Spree, which is kicker. Uh, <laughs> Spree uh, appears on cards that have one, two, they're usually very low mana cost instants and sorceries. Uh, and then Spree, you get to choose which modes you want to use on the spell, and they cost additional mana for each mode that you choose. Uh, so you can get very... You can get a very basic effect for very low mana. You can get a whole ton of effects if you dump a ton of mana into it. Uh, they're much more, they're very versatile. You got a lot of options with them. Even though they have a base mana cost and a spree cost with them, they also seem to be fairly reasonable in the mana cost for the effects that they're causing as well. I think the effects uh, usually, from the ones we've, we've seen them all now, uh, from the ones we've looked at a lot, which one, one of the red ones, uh, there's two, it's red, red, and mm -hmm. then the activated, the either have add one generic to uh, redirect a spell, or you have one to copy a spell. Um, a three mana deflecting swat where you can throw extra mana in to then get the spell that you are deflecting. Yeah. Or a different spell. <laughs> Basically, yeah, exactly. Uh, either of those is well costed. Mm -hmm. Like, those are pretty pretty on average. But if you do both of them, which, of course, you're not going to be doing both of them a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, maybe in more interactive or, or, or higher power games where the stack can get complicated. But yeah, overall, I like the spree mechanic. I think I think the spree mechanic is probably the best one in the set, in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, the plot mechanic is a weird, isn't a weird spot. I think uh, it's nice. It is nice because yeah. uh, the whole thing with plot is that it is effectively foretell. But instead of foretelling for a standard of two mana and then spending more mana to cast it later, uh, which is usually which is less than the mana cost printed on the card. Um, you instead play pay the plot cost when you uh, put it face down, and then you can cast it at sorcery speed for free anytime on a future turn. You just can't do it on the same turn that mm -hmm. you plot it. Um, I like this more than Fortell, just because it's one of those, like, you can keep things pretty low-key in the early turns, and you're just kind of quietly plotting some stuff. Plotting. <laughs> yeah. And then you can have a big explosive turn where you don't need a lot of mana. Or mm -hmm. if you run out of mana setting up a big turn, then you have free payoffs that you've been just banking. Uh, particularly with cards like Fibblethip, which make it a lot easier to plot cards. And you can just plot, plot off the top over of your and deck. over and over again with a whole bunch of stuff, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm... Plot is one I'm very interested in. I do need I do need to see somebody online play this and play a deck they've built because I know there there's some broken stuff you can probably do with it. Oh, absolutely. But with it being just at uh, uh, the casting being at sorcery speed, that does change a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like you could probably set up some huge like storm turns. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you leave yeah like leave basically gonna leave yourself open a little bit. Leave yourself open a little. All right. Cast one. No response? Cool. Next. Okay, priority? Cool. All right, now that I've cast five spells, storm off. Yeah. It's like, okay, I get it. It's cool. I'm interested to see how that one uh, plays out in a yes. longer. Uh, one that will certainly almost assuredly be ignored, except for some very specific interactions with powerful cards. Outlaws uh, is a new creature collective. Uh, much like the party mechanic from D&D, &D, where you had to have a wizard, a rogue, a warrior, and cleric. A Yes. Yeah. Some combination therein. Uh, now you have outlaws, which matter for assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, and warlocks are now a collective. Um, I think it's a bit less restrictive than the party mechanic, where it wanted you to have one of each or mm -hmm. multiple kinds within the party group, whereas this just affects multiple creature classes. Yeah. Um, while also, it, it's just a lot easier to write out outlaws. Mm -hmm. But then most of the time they have reminder text on reminder them, so it is it's a whole thing. But with uh, with rogues and assassins and pirates specifically, you can be getting a lot of very powerful creatures that are getting 
bonus mm-hmm. uh, effects. Like, I believe there's one that, like, doubles ETBs for outlaw things. Yeah, I believe so. Which, um, I don't know if you know this, but, like, uh, uh, Dockside Extortionist is a pirate. Yeah, he is. So there's some there's some powerful synergies with specific cards, uh, but I imagine that this isn't going to be something that we're going to see a lot of or come back in the future. I, I'm sure I I can imagine this because uh, like the party mechanic as you refer uh, as we were talking about earlier. It yeah it appeared in Zendikar. It reappeared in um, one of the Dungeons and Dragons set, and then from there it's kind of like. I'm I'm not gonna play with any party cards because that's too much work to think about. This is like you said a lot easier where it's just like mm-hmm. ah buff that creature and that and i guess my commander okay yeah uh there's certainly some commanders that you can also build around where you now have a new uh tribe that you can build around effectively Mm -hmm. that isn't just a single creature type uh but isn't just all creature types like a changeling deck or something before we get back to the rest of this podcast clip from the duels and mandorks podcast we want to thank our sponsor proxy forge Proxy Forge creates high quality Magic the Gathering proxies for you to use in your commander decks and really anywhere you want. You can get custom Magic the Gathering packs that include CEDH staples as well as monocolor commander staples, cycles of expensive cards like tutors and the swords. You can also get upgrade packs for commander precons that include 10 cards to soup up your favorite precon. If all you want is a very simple mana base, you can get any of the cycles of lands as well as lands organized by color pairing. And that's not to say anything about the custom art soul rings you can acquire as well as the plethora of singles available to you. Use the link in the description below to help us out and check out Proxy Forge to help bling out your board state. We've got two more mechanics. The the big one of this set that it has a lot of mecha- that has a lot of cards printed around it is committing a crime, uh, which is probably going to be the easiest thing to put online because it just references a type of game action that you're o- almost always doing in games. Yeah. Uh, it's committing a crime. To commit a crime, you have to cast a spell, activate an ability, or have a triggered ability that targets one or more of either an opponent. A spell or an ability opponent controls, a permanent an opponent controls, or a card in an opponent's graveyard. So effectively, just any if you're interacting with any of your opponent's stuff, you're committing a crime. Yes. Um, which on flavor. <laughs> every every time my board is interacted with, it's criminal. It's oh, a criminal absolutely. offense. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you arrest them. Arrest them. Murder. So in any deck that wants to be interactive with the table, uh, these commit a crime cards are certainly going to be helpful. I will say a lot, most of the commit a crime cards uh, have this activate, there's triggers only once per turn. Um, definitely, I can I can understand why they did that because some of these are very easy, like commit a crime, draw a card, commit a crime, do X, uh, could get out of hand very easily. I mean, that turns into um, bounce an opponent's creature, draw a card, counter a spell, draw a card. Yeah. Uh, damage or cre- like it, it there's a lot even even if you're just like oh i cast opt but i have something that triggers a ping effect yeah now that's committed a crime and now i can it, it can very much spiral out of control um there are several that don't have there are yeah. turn stipulations so keep an eye out for a couple them of legendary creatures especially mm-hmm. that's true uh the last core set mechanic is mount creatures and the saddle ability mount is just a new creature type that doesn't really mean anything in and of itself but uh, mount creatures tend to i believe all so far have the saddle ability yes which is basically crew yes um, instead of having an artifact that is not a creature until it is crewed, these are still creatures, mm-hmm. and you can still attack with them as normal. And if you choose to tap other creatures that you control that have a collective power equal to or exceeding the saddle number, so saddle one, you need a creature of power one or more. And you can, of course, just over saddle a creature if you so desired. For mm-hmm. There's a million reasons you would want to tap your own things down. Um, but when a creature is saddled, when they attack or when they do some other action in the game, there's an additional benefit associated with it. Uh, like the new Gitrog monster, uh, when it attacks, you can sacrifice the creature that saddled it, and then you can, I believe it's draw cards equal to its mana value or something like that. And then uh, put, I believe, land cards tapped mm-hmm. onto the battlefield equal to its mana value as well. Yeah, so you get more um, you get more value out of attacking with these value. saddleable... Value, value. 
Uh, I do. I like this more than crew, but I also feel like it's by far the most niche ability Mm -hmm. in the set. Uh, I like it more than crew just because it's able to act on its own as a somewhat basic creature. Because a lot of them still have things like reach or trample sure. or vigilance and that kind of stuff. Um, but it, it's a, I like it just from the perspective... I like it a lot from the perspective of being able to utilize 1-1 one, one tokens with as, outside of just blockers mm-hmm. or fodder to be taken out by a blocker. Yeah. I uh, I think that the ones I've seen of the, of the style mechanic... Not a huge amount of creatures, not a huge amount of mounts in the in the set, um, but the saddle abilities I do like a lot of them more than I like a lot of vehicle abilities. That yes, we see. but one more. Uh, this isn't a core set mechanic. This is for the commander decks. Uh, much like with uh, March of the Machine, where they came with plane chase cards for like a little sub mini game going on during a commander game, they now have bounties. Uh, that are going to come with all of these commander decks. Effectively, it is a, an additional deck in the middle of the in the middle of the game, where you have after the f- starting player's third turn, you flip over the top one, and then uh, the bounty has some kind of a requirement where, like at the beginning of your end step, you need to have done this mm-hmm. uh, game action of some kind, and if you fulfill that, you then get a reward. Um, if you fulfill it the very, fir- the very first turn that it's flipped up, you get a treasure token, uh, and then for every turn that passes that it isn't fulfilled, once you fulfill it, you get more value, which is either additional treasure tokens or you add on the ability to draw cards. Uh, so very basic rewards. Uh, nothing as crazy as plane chase. It's a bit simpler yeah. than plane chase. Uh, just an, just another way to spice up and kind of speed up your commander games a little bit because I feel like a lot of games can fall into the trap of, all right, we've been playing for two hours because nobody has adequate interaction. Well, at least now we've got mana and card draw to help speed things up a little bit. Yeah, And a lot of them, they aren't, they aren't complicated game actions either. I know one no. of them is if you did not cast a spell this turn at the beginning of your end step, you may claim this bounty. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be that's going to be very helpful for somebody who's like, eh, I spent three turns and I've made two land drops. What do I do? I've made two land drops or something like um, your oh my god, slime foot and squee, mm. where you're doing a lot of you're spending a lot of mana on activated abilities, yep. so you're not casting spells once um, once your commander's out. You're putting them into the graveyard with a game action and then pulling it out with an activated ability and pulling something, and dumping mana into non spell casty things and that such. Uh, so those are the core mechanics of the set. Uh, I think as far as set mechanics go, I like, I really like spree. I like plot commit a crime. I feel like it's going to be a a mechanic that only ever appears in this set. So I'm not super excited. Mm -hmm. I feel like plot and spree can come up in other sets, especially spree. Yeah. Um, and I would like them to. And then Outlaws, I feel like there's going to be random cards that reference Outlaws in the future. But I, I think Spree definitely has uh, the ability, a staying ability. Mm-hmm. Um, these cards, uh, those are the cards that we're going to definitely see, like, see long-term play in, in formats. Absolutely. Um, plot cards, definitely going to see a more niche, um, <laughs> very specific. Bless me. I'm sure I heard that. I'm sure it was picked up on your mic. I, I sneezed quite loudly. But uh, uh, plot is going to be very niche um, gameplay types. And uh, uh, yeah, we're probably not going to see one-off plot cards too often. Yeah. Commit a crime. I could see just a, a one-off card be that, you know, if you're in a, like I said, a highly interactive deck just for a value piece. I could see, I could see commit a crime come back in like a, um, oh my God. Uh, New Capenna. Another sure, New revisit some New Capenna. I could see that happening. All right, so we've gone over the core set mechanics. There are a couple of cards.